I want to welcome you to another podcast of the Prodigal Son. You know, I woke up this morning and and uh, was going through my my daily devotionals and and uh, praying and and asking God to to show me, reading my my scriptures and and studying. You know, I do that seven days a week, and you know. If you will, now this this is this is what I want to get over to you today. If you will give yourself to the Word of God for thirty days, just give give yourself to it. Take take time out of your day every day. Come up with a time that you're going to study and you're going to seek God and seek for seek Him for what He wants. And, and allow His Word to guide you and direct you, your life will change. I, I, it, oh, it thrills me to look back over the, the times in my life that I've seen God just work and work miraculously through His Word, through the truth in His Word. I want to read my, my prayers for each and every person that walks the face of this earth today. They come out of Paul's prayers for the Ephesians. It starts with Ephesians 1.15. It says, Ever since I first heard of your strong faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for God's people everywhere, I have not stopped thanking God for you. I pray for you constantly, asking God, the glorious Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, to give you spiritual wisdom and insight so that you might grow in your knowledge of God. I pray that your hearts will be flooded with light so that you can understand the confident hope he has given to those he called his holy people who are his rich and glorious inheritance. I also pray that you will understand the incredible greatness of God's power for us who believe him. This is the same mighty power that raised Christ from the dead and seated him in the place of honor at God's right hand in the heavenly realms. Now he is far above any ruler or authority or power or leader or anything else. Not only in this world, but also in the world to come. God has put all things under the authority of Christ and has made him head over all things for the benefit of the church. And the church is his body. It is made full and complete by Christ who fills all things everywhere with himself. Ephesians 3.14 says, When I think of all this, I fall to my knees and pray to the Father, the creator of everything in heaven and on earth. I pray that from his glorious unlimited resources, he will empower you with inner strength through his spirit. Then Christ will make his home in your hearts as you trust in him. Your roots will grow down into God's love and keep you strong. And you may have the power to understand, as all God's people should, how wide, how long, how high, and how deep His love is. May you experience the love of Christ, though it is too great to understand fully. Then you will be made complete with all the fullness of life and power that comes from God. Now all glory to God who is able, through His mighty power at work within us, to accomplish infinitely more than we might ask or think. Glory to Him in the church and in Christ Jesus through all generations forever and ever. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Go to His Word. Seek God in His Word. Find out what He wants to tell you through His Word. Seek Him. I pray that God enlightens you to who you are to who you are in Jesus Christ. And you're going to find that out through His Word, through the written Word of God. Now let's see what God's Word has to say today. Father, I thank You and I praise You for Your Word. I thank You for all that You have shown me in this Word. I praise You for this message that You have given me today. Guide and direct Lord, the people that listen to this podcast, touch them, help them to understand and to know that you are for them, not against them. Glory to your holy name. I praise you and I thank you today. In Jesus' holy name I pray. Amen. I'm going to take my scripture today out of a very familiar scripture. It's Second Corinthians 5 and 17. It says, Therefore, if any man... 
be in Christ. He is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Now, I've quoted that a lot here on this on this podcast. I want to read it in the the New Living Translations. And uh, but I want you to understand something that in Jesus Christ, you are a new creature. Old things are passed away and all things have become new. Grab on to that. Grab on to it and 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 hide it in your heart and start claiming it over your life that you are a new creature. You've been made new by the washing. Oh, of God's, of Jesus Christ's blood as a sacrifice for your sins. Come to understand that. The New Living Translations for 2 Corinthians 5, 17 says, This means that anyone who belongs to Christ has become a new person. The old life is gone and a new life has begun. Don't you ever let the devil lie to you and tell you that you're just the same as you used to be. I, I, I've had people in my life that stand and, and try their best to, to put me back in that category that I used to be in. And, and I just, I just have to turn my back to them and, and say, no, that ain't me. I'm a new creature in my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. You know, that's sad for a lot of people in this world that are born again people. Now, don't get me wrong. I don't, I, don't want, I don't want you to misunderstand this. There are, there are millions upon millions of born-again children of God that do not know who they are, that refuse, and not intentionally. They, they've been deceived into thinking that they're that same old sinner that they were years ago or before they got born again. And I'm going to tell you something, that held me back for years. That held me back for years. That held me back from, from doing what I was supposed to be doing in my early 20s. And that is preaching this, this gospel all over this world. I was 40 some odd years old before I came to the realization of who I was in Jesus Christ. Over 25 years had passed over over my ignorance of what God's Word says and the deception of religion and religious people. People, I want you to understand something. If you are born again today, you are a new creature. Romans uh, 8 and 1 says, There is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. Don't let the devil, don't let religion condemn you another minute of your day, of, the, of your lifetime. People, I want you to understand this. This held me back for years, and I've purposed in my heart not to let, me, let it hold me back another second of my life. Because I've got a job to do in this world, and that's to preach the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ all over this nation and all over this world. To see the faith-building, faith-teaching, Bible-believing, and Bible-teaching churches of this world filled to overflowing. Why? Because there's people out here that think every church is the same. They're all the same, full of religious people that look down their nose at people that haven't, that don't do what they do. And that's a lie of religion. That's a lie of the devil. There's people, there's churches out here today full of people that will love you and care for you and, 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 and agree with you according to what God's word says. That, that, that have pastors that will teach you. And strengthen you, not through religion, not through how good you can be, but through the Word of God, the, the, the precious Word of God, the truth. But Jesus said, you shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. 
There's freedom in Jesus Christ. There's freedom in knowing the, the, the Lord as your personal Savior and knowing that you can count on what God's Word says about you and to you and for you. There's freedom in that. There's hope in this world. There's people, I meet, I meet people every week at, this, at, at going to the jail. And, and buddy, I'm telling you what, they ain't got no hope in this world. Some of them's looking at that long sentences, long sentences. But yet there is hope in Jesus Christ. And that's my purpose to give them hope. There's people out here in this world that would not darken the door of a church because they think all churches are the same. And it's my purpose in this world to to make sure that people know that God's a good God. And there is some churches out here all over this nation and all over this world that are full of godly, loving people that want to help you and strengthen you and guide you through life, not through their rules and regulations, not through what they think that, that needs to be done in your life, but what thus saith the Word of God. People, we've got to come to understand that. And this verse of Scripture is exactly where you start. When you come to understand that there is, therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Behold, the old, man, old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. When you come to understand that, when you come to realize what I'm telling you today, that you are a new creature, that you have been born into the family of God, that, you, that, that, that Jesus Christ sits at the right hand of the Father making intercession for you and I. God's on your side. Jesus Christ is on your side. I ran for years, ran away from God. Why? Because I was, I was living out of His will, living in sin, drinking every day and and didn't know any didn't know any better because why because I'd, I'd allow religion and the devil to lie to me and say there was no hope when the truth the very truth of what I am telling you today was not a realization in my life at that time I did not know who I was in my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ I did not realize that I was the righteousness of God in Him. No, I'd been taught that you ain't nothing but an old sinner saved by grace, and, and, and you're just lucky to be here. You need to fall down on your knees and beg God to forgive you. Forgive you for what? See, that's what I was, that's what I was, I was dealing with on a daily basis. I didn't know what to forget for to ask Him to forgive me for. I was in a place in my life that I couldn't see what it was written in black and white and couldn't understand that. Why? Because I wasn't looking. I wasn't looking. When I got to a place in my life that I said, Lord, show me. Help me. Help me to see where I've, I've, I've made mistakes. Help me to see where, what I need to be doing in my life. And when he did, you know how he done it? He done it through a man. A, a, a good friend of mine, he walks up and, and tells me, you know, he wasn't out of his way about it. There ain't a religious bone in Ronnie Kate's body. He just told me. He heard me speaking, heard what I was, how I, how, how I was talking. And, and so he said, buddy, you need to listen to Charles Capps. Need to find out. And I started listening to Charles Capps. And before you know it, I was listening to Keith Moore and Kenneth Copeland and Jesse Duplantis. I'd listen to Jesse Duplantis all, off and on all my adult life, but yet hadn't come to the realization that what they were talking about, that I could read for myself and believe for myself because God was no respecter of person. Peter said it in Acts ten thirty four. I perceive that God is no respecter of person. And what he'll do for me, he'll do for you. And what he'll do for Billy Graham, he'll do for you. What he'll do for any other person that you can think of that, that is an outstanding person of God, that, that he'll do for you. 
And how does he do that? Through faith in him, faith in his word, faith in what he says about you, for you, and to you. God wants us to be strong in this world. Why? Because we are his church. We are his body. Christ is the head of the church, and we are the body. Now, I want you to understand that. That if we're the body of Christ, we need to be out here doing what Christ would have us to do. And that first starts at finding out who you are in him. Finding out that you are a new creature. Finding out that, that, that you are forgiven. God don't hold you accountable for your sins. But that Jesus Christ died and became sin for us. That we might be the righteousness of God in him. And when you come to understand that, come to know that, come to realize that, and, and come to stand and, at, his, at his throne and, and praise him for who you are in Jesus Christ. Religion wants to keep you in a place that you're downtrodden, beaten down, and, and don't know who you are. Because when you become, when you find out who you are in Jesus Christ, you're going to start doing something for God. How's that? By just telling people that what God has done for me. Oh my goodness, when I look back over my life, what God has done for me in my lifetime. Just in the last five years, to look back over, I wouldn't take nothing, nothing for what God has done for me in the last five years. How did he do it? Because I started getting in his word and believing his word and standing on his word and believing that by his stripes I am healed. Believing that my God supplies all my needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Believing that I was the righteousness of God. Why? In him. How? In Him. I am the righteousness of God in my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And if you are born again today, so are you. You are a new creature. Don't let any devil in hell try to tell you any different. Don't let anybody ever tell you that you're different from anybody else. No, you're not. God's no respecter of person. He loves you just as much as He loves anybody else. He told me, uh, I guess it's been a couple of years ago now, he said, son, I love the abortion doctor as much as I love the babies they're killing. When you come to that realization that God loves you and, and, and cares for you just as much as he does an innocent child, you can come to the realization that, that what he said in this verse right here, that you are a new creature in him. And don't ever let the devil talk about your bad mistakes, your past mistakes. If you make a mistake, don't hold your, don't drop your head and run from him. No, run to him. Repent. Say, Lord, I made a mistake. Forgive me. And he will. He's faithful and just. I want to read that First John 1 and, 1 and 9. If you're a born again child of God today, and 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 you've made mistakes. This is what it, this is what John, the first epistle of John, the ninth chapter, First John, one and nine says, "If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness." Glory to God. Confess your sins to Him. Believe that He forgives you because He does. He's faithful and just to forgive you of your sins and cleanse you from all unrighteousness. Find out who you are in Jesus Christ. Believe God's word above all opinion and, and stand on the truth in his word. Believe it. Receive what he has for you today. And that is life, truth, hope, strength, victory. Who in who? In Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior, in the truth, in God's Word. Glory to God. You know, if you've never been born again, if you don't know what it is to be born again, to receive Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, to make Him Lord of your life, that's the easiest thing in the world to do. Romans 10 and 9 said, If thou shalt confess with thy mouth, 
the Lord Jesus, and shall believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. That's all it takes to be born again. That is all it takes to be born into the family of God. And then find out who you are in his word. Find out that you are a new creature in Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior. Find out that you are the righteousness of God in him, in who? In Jesus Christ. Why? Because you have confessed Jesus Christ as Lord of your life and believed in your heart that God has raised him from the dead. You are saved. Not only are you saved, but you're a new creature. Don't ever let the devil lie to you and tell you that you're not. Stand up on two feet, throw up both hands and say, Lord, I praise you that I am a new creature in my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I confess him as my Lord and the Lord of my life, and I am the righteousness of God in Jesus Christ, my Lord and Savior. Believe what God says. Stand on what he says. Find a new, find the, 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 the life that God wants you to have, and that's a strengthened life, a victorious life, a life that you can stand up and say, my God, what have I been doing all this time? Not knowing that Jesus Christ has made you clean, made you righteous, in God, in Jesus Christ, in Him, in the sacrifice that He made. Glory to God. If you're not born again, make Jesus Christ Lord of your life. If you are born again, believe what God says about you. You are a new creature in your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Stand on that. Believe that. And watch your life change like you've never seen it change before. Glory to God. Go to our website. Get in touch with us. We want to hear from you. I want to hear what God is doing in your life. It thrills me to hear from people that that have come to understand the truth in God's Word. Come to understand what God's Word says about them. Go to our website. Get in touch with us. It's the-prodigalson.com. I want to hear from you. If you've been born again, listen to this podcast. If you've, if you've accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, listen to this podcast. Drop us an email. Go to our, go to, to our uh, uh, social media pages. Somehow get in touch with us. Go to our website. There's all kind of different ways to get in touch with us. All the, all the links to our social media pages are on the notes in this podcast. Go click on one of those. Send us a message. Send, let me know what, you, what God has done in your life through you listening to this podcast. It thrills me to, to hear, hear from people that, that the Word of God has changed their life. The Word of God has, has put truth in their life that they can stand on and believe. Glory to His holy name. I want to take just a minute to thank all the partners of this ministry. Partners, thank you that you sow into this ministry, that you allow God to lead you to sow into this ministry, to spread the truth of God's Word all over this world. I, told, I said this uh, uh, the other day, I'm going to say it again, there's been over 10,000, 10,000 downloads on this podcast. And, and, and it's just, it's unreal how quickly this thing is catching on all over the nation, all over this world. I went back and looked, and, and there is very few states in the United States that don't have people listening, that haven't downloaded the prodigal son. People are getting set free, set free through the truth in God's Word. And that's what, we, I, that's what I'm thanking you partners for, for helping us put God's Word out all over this world to let people know that there's more to life than religion. There's more to a Christian life than rules and regulations. No, there's freedom. There's hope. There's strength and there's truth in God's Word. And I'm, all point, I'm, all, I'm pointing those people to God's Word. Partners, thank you.
If you or if you're not a partner, pray about becoming a partner. Pray about sowing into God's kingdom to see the truths that you have heard on this podcast put out all over this world to see people born again, to see them born into the family of God, to see them victorious, strengthened through the truth in God's word. Partners, thank you. If you're not a partner, pray about becoming a partner. I pray that that God blesses each and every one of you a hundredfold according to Mark 10, 29 and 30. Glory to God in the highest. Glory to God. Partners, thank you. Thank you. I I can't say this enough. Thank you for allowing the Lord to lead and guide you to sow into this ministry so that we can see people born into the family of God all over this world and come to realize that God's not a tyrant, but He's a loving Father that wants more than anything to love us and to care for us and to help us to see that that we're worth something. We're worth something in this in this world. We're precious to God today. Partners, you've got a part in in letting people know just how important they are to God. Just how good God is. The truth in God's Word is setting people free all over this nation, all over this world, and it's in it. And you've taken a part in that. You've got credit. You've got credit for what this ministry is doing all over this nation and all over this world to see people born into the family of God to set free today, being set free today through the truth in God's Word. Go to our website. Get in touch with us. It's the-prodigalson.com.